Well, if you default on that kind of a thing, you're breaching a contract. And uh, generally, a contract voluntarily entered into that's not illegal. I mean, we're not talking about a hit contract for the mafia. Um, the side that didn't breach is entitled to legal re redress. And so usually what will happen is first the uh, creditor will contact you directly and say, you know, you, you were supposed to make these payments. You haven't made the payments. Let's see if we can't work something out. Uh, if that doesn't work, well, they're, the original creditor is not in the business of debt collection. It's in the business of lending money. So it might hire a debt collection agency to uh, go after the debt, or it might sell the debt. That's really the more common thing. Uh, so ABC creditor uh, lent you money, you're not paying, they've sent you requests for payment, it's just not uh, producing any results. So they contact Dewey Cheatham and Howe down the street and say, hey, Dewey, uh, we've got this debt for $10,000. Uh, you want to buy it? And Dewey says, yeah, we'll pay five hundred dollars for it. Five hundred? This is a $10,000 debt. Yeah, you haven't been able to collect on it, so it doesn't look like this is an easy one to collect. We'll pay you five hundred. dollars All right, so they sell the debt to Dewey, and on your credit report, it says charge off. And you think... The debt's gone. Oh, no, the debt isn't gone. From ABC Bank's perspective, it's gone. But from Dewey's perspective, it's a good debt. So can Dewey just collect the five hundred? Oh, no, they bought a $10,000 debt. So they can collect from you $10,000 if the original balance was $10,000. All right. So Dewey typically will contact you and uh, have an upbeat tone. They'll say something like, you owe our client ABC Bank $10,000, but I've been offered to, uh, authorized to settle for $7,500. This is a savings to you of $2,500, but I must receive payment in full within 30 days, or we'll take, and it's usually vaguely worded, something like, appropriate action. Well, nothing happened. So the next communication may have a somewhat dejected tone to it. They'll say, well, you know, I offered you this terrific deal to reduce your balance to my client ABC Bank by $2,500. I don't understand why you didn't take me up on it. But I have been authorized to extend that offer one more time but I must receive payment in full within 30 days or else we will take legal action. Now, some of the outfits, if you contact them, may accept monthly payments, but the trend tends to be that they want payment in one lump sum. And that's usually a pretty hard uh, thing to do if you're having trouble making the payments in the first place, where are you gonna come up with that $7,500? So you don't pay, you don't pay, eventually they will sue you. And you'll know you're being sued because uh, whatever problems we have in the United States, we're not living in a Franz Kafka novel. You aren't sued in secret. So you'll get uh, summons. It'll say on the uh, cover page, summons, you are being sued. And attached to that will be a complaint that in essence says you owe this money, pay up, um, and you'll have time to respond, 30 days. And if you don't, then they will uh, file another thing with the court called a request for default judgment. In essence, what they're saying to the court is, Your Honor, we sued this person and we're not getting paid. This person has taken no action to defend. We can't wait until the end of the world. Give us a default judgment. So you'll get a copy of the request for default judgment. If you don't take any action on that within, and I'm speaking in terms of California uh, deadlines, 21 days, well, then the clerk of the court will enter the default judgment. With that default judgment, the creditor can go to the sheriff and have the sheriff initiate a wage garnishment. That will be 25% of each of your paychecks. The sheriff can also levy funds out of any bank accounts that you have. Now, with the garnishment, you'll usually get maybe a two-week warning because your payroll department will send you a statement saying, we've received this wage garnishment order, uh, and the next check will be garnished, and if you're paid every two weeks, it'll be a two-week window. 
But with the levying of funds out of bank accounts, there's no warning. It's just one minute to the next, suddenly the vacuum cleaner has sucked everything out of your bank account. Another thing they'll do if you have assets is record a lien against your assets. Most of the time they're going to record a lien against real property rather than personal property, but at least in theory, they could record liens against personal property as well. Although, at least in California, they have to record the lien in the county where the asset exists. If they don't, then they haven't uh, successfully perfected the secured interest they have in whatever the asset is. Now, when you go through a bankruptcy, uh, if the debt is of the dischargeable nature, then the debt will be wiped out. If they have recorded a lien, there is a process whereby we can remove the lien. The legal term we use is we avoid the lien. It's a somewhat unusual usage of the word avoid. It means to render null and void. And so we can get rid of both the lien against the asset and the underlying debt. So bankruptcy can be a very attractive way to deal with this sort of thing. But those are the uh, options available to the creditor. So if you default on, say, a payday loan, or you're in one of those debt consolidation programs and you're not making the payments, creditor's not getting the payments, so it's going to go through those steps that I just described, that's what you're probably going to face. Ultimately, a lawsuit followed by wage garnishment, bank levies, and liens against assets.